video, we're going to have a quick look at getting line work uh, from original artworks or found artworks. And we're going to add color, texture, lighting, and some other effects to really make some exciting new finished artwork. So I have my image here, and I'm going to open this up with Photoshop. And here it is here. Um, and this is just dragged straight into Photoshop. I haven't dropped into an existing document. And let's have a quick look at the image size. I'm going to go image and image size. And we can see here that the width and height, uh, make sure this is in centimeters, only 3.85 by 4.23, which is fairly low. The resolution is fairly high, but even so, um, it, it is quite a small image. So if we zoom in, remember control plus, control minus, we can actually see it is quite jaggedy quite pixelated and really we want to look at something that's of a much higher detail uh, because we want to get a nice polished image to end with. So I'm actually going to close that down like so and I'm going to open up a new document. I'm going to go file, new and I'm going to make sure it's set on international paper and your setup may be different to this with newer versions um, but the idea is the same. Hit the international A4. Um, you could have the option of landscape and portrait, but as is, is fine for this image. And we can have a quick look. You can see it's standard A4 paper, 300 pixels an inch. So a nice, decent size, and hit OK. And there it is there. Now, the problem that we're going to have is if I drag this into our document, we can see it's still going to have that same low res. Even if we scale this up, remember I'm holding down Shift scale proportionately and enter and we're going to zoom in and we can still see we get that pixelated bitmap based image. Now I'm going to use a trick. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm going to try to see if we can get a smoother looking image for this. I'm just going to minimize that and I'm actually going to open up my original image with Illustrator. Now there's Illustrator there. Now, don't worry if you're not too familiar with Illustrator. We're only going to use this for one little trick. Make sure you have your selection tool and select on there. And there is our image in Illustrator. Again, some of these tools are the same. Control plus or minus. We zoom in. And you can see that this is still pixelated. And even though Illustrator is vector-based, um, you can bring in bitmap-based or pixel-based images into Illustrator. So. I'm going to run this through a particular um, thing that Illustrator has, and that's called the image trace. So make sure you're selected on your object. Zoom in to, to check it out as well. And we'll notice the image trace shows up here. It has a drop down with some options. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the window and open up the image trace panel. And it's going to give us a lot more options. Um, it's got some presets, defaults technical drawing line art, etc., etc. Now, word of warning, this can chew up a lot of time and a lot of processing power. So just be aware of that if you want to get too fancy with it. I'm going to hit the preview button. Um, it's going to say that um, it's a large image, so it's going to take some t could take some time. I'm going to hit OK. And already we're crunching away. Now, the default of this came out pretty good. Um, the line work seems a lot neater than before um, and that's pretty good we have some options here which we can go through but we're just looking for something nice and neat I'm not going to mess around with this too much um, and needless to say let's stop that um, we could try all sorts of things from line art to high fidelity photos um, but at the moment this default's working just fine for me uh, let's bring that one back. Threshold we could play around with, but I'm okay with that. Obviously, we're going to get some issues with that, but that's not a problem. And once that's done, I'm going to hit expand. And that's going to actually turn into a series of paths. And this has actually turned it into a vector-based image. Um, which seems very exciting, but it's extremely complex. So there's not a lot we can really do about messing that, but we just want this strong image here. So 
again, I'm selecting it with my selection tool. I'm hitting Control C or Command C if you're on the Mac. And I'm gonna go back into our Photoshop document. And there it is there. And I'm gonna hit Control V to paste. It's gonna ask me to place this smart object pixel path or shape that. I'm gonna leave it on the smart object and hit OK. There it is there. And I'm going to scale this up. Let's hide the one that we previously had for now. Actually, we won't be able to do that until we hit enter. But I'm going to scale this up. So grab one of the corners and move it. Hold down shift to make sure that you constrain it so we don't get anything that's out of shape. Otherwise, you're going to get up with a skinny image. So shift is going to lock that in. We'll bring that up and just hit enter once I've decided to finish. Now, Already my tool, uh, my workspace is getting a little bit cluttered. Um, I'm actually gonna get rid of stuff I don't need. So anything that's not there. If you don't have a, a preset workspace set up already, you can also go to Window, Workspace, and hit Reset Essentials, and this will end up with our default. Um, but again, a little bit too much stuff that I don't need. Uh, layers, we definitely need, I'm gonna drag that out. The other ones, let's close those down. Great. Let's have a look at our layers here. Um, let's zoom in a bit. And I have my vector smart object. This is the one I've just imported in. And you can see there's our bitmap based clunky one. Now we are losing a little bit of detail with the vector, but um, for this exercise, it's actually better to have a little bit less detail. So I'm actually going to delete that previous one. So we just get this nice. Whoop, vector-based image right here. And because we've placed it in the size that we want, I don't actually need this to be a smart object anymore, so I'm gonna rasterize that. You can do that by right-clicking on this and hitting rasterize layer. Other option is to go to layer, down to rasterize, and either hit smart object or layer. I'm just gonna get rid of that information. Um, which we just don't need to raster, um, scale it anymore or do anything fancy to that. Next thing, what we're going to do is just analyze our image. Now we have obviously some sort of astronaut in here, a fighter pilot, and we have a face texture, we have eyes, we have a, it seems to be some sort of glass visor over the top, and we have a helmet and some sort of armor here, and some other interesting accoutrements to go along. Now we want to be able to block these out very quickly because we're gonna be adding textures, shading, colors, highlights, etc., to this. And the last thing we wanna do is get out our paintbrush and manually paint detail by detail. This is gonna take us a very long time. We're gonna use a technique that has been used in uh, stuff like graphic design, comic books, and illustration for ages, and it's called flatting. Um, and we're gonna create a flatting layer, which basically means we can very quickly go through and select specific elements that we're gonna use. Now, in order to do this properly, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename our layer. Let's call this Line Art. Again, double click on the name in our Layers panel. And I'm gonna add a color to this. So I'm gonna right click on that and let's just add a color. I'm gonna add Violet to this. And that's just as an identifier. So we can find this layer because we're gonna get a lot more layers and we need to be able to find them really, really quickly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my blend mode here and I'm going to change this to multiply. Now this is going to allow us to see the dark areas, but it's going to make the white areas pretty much invisible. It's going to vary depending on the grade scale. I'm also going to drop the opacity down. I want to get nice light or mid gray area. So about the 50% mark in our opacity. You can manually type that in as well. And the reason for this is we're gonna to have to draw actual lines. We need to see what we're going on. Drop that down even further to about 40%. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock that. So multiply, opacity down, lock. If I don't wanna be painting on this line out layer, that's a definite no-no. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer in our layers panel there. Or you can also go to layer, new layer, or shift control N. And let's call this flatting. And this is where we're gonna add our colors to this. We're gonna use our tools, rectangular tool, 
elliptical tool, shortcut M, and our lasso tools, shortcut L. And remember, shift and the shortcut key will cycle through if there is a variance in this one. Okay, uh, it's L, so shift L will go through this. We are mainly going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to do straight lines. The other ones are going to be a little bit too finicky. We need some really good precision with this magnetic lasso tool that's going to take us all over the place. These are very powerful tools. This is the one we're going to use polygonal. A couple of things to check. Make sure the feather's down to zero. And make sure anti-alias is ticked off. Now, this is very, very important. And the reason for that is what anti-alias does is it creates a sort of a feathered edge when we're creating shapes. Um, Photoshop is pixel based and if you create stuff in pixels, it's going to try and create an in-between to make things look more smooth and curved. Um, and in this instance, this is not what we want. We want absolute precision. We want where our line ends to be a solid block color. Our flatting needs to be quite precise and we don't want any 50%. So anti-alias unchecked. Okay. Make sure you've got flatting select and drag that below your line art. I'm going to right click on that and let's make that nice and nice, nice bright color to, to spot. I'm going to make that yellow. Okay, so let's start basically blocking this out. I'm going to bring up some colors. Now, obviously, we've got our color pickers down here, but we need to uh, add and assign particular colors to particular areas that we're going to add some detail. So I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to go down to Swatches. And there's our swatches there. Let's drag that. In. I'll usually come up with multiple panels, but let's just apply that in and expand that down a bit. And here we have some basic colors, at least to start with. Again, we've got options up here to add other ones, um, but you know, this is good. We can quickly go and pick out. When we're doing our flooding layer, the colors aren't really all that important. You can get stuff that you think is going to be kind of close, but in the end, we're just going to use this as a giant, easy select area. So let's go ahead, go ahead and do some of these. Now again, rectangular acid tool, anti-alias ticked on. We're going to use our bucket tool, shortcut is G. Make sure you're on your bucket tool, not your gradient. Remember, shift G will cycle through. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that anti-alias is unticked. And all layers is unticked. Now that's really important, otherwise our line work is going to interfere with where our bucket is filling in. We only want it to affect our flattening line. Great, well let's get started. Um, remember, Control plus, Control minus to zoom in, spacebar to move about, we hit L for my lasso tool, and let's start having a quick check and what we can actually fill in here. So let's maybe have a look at this face here. Uh, we can see we've got some hair coming here. Some of the areas we're just going to have to try and figure out what they're doing ourselves. Um, so, you know, this looks like a bit of hair, but it's not quite finished off. This is because we ended up uh, starting with a fairly low res image, but I'm going to click through, and what we want to aim for, I'll zoom in a little bit, is with our lasso tool, make sure you're in between the lines. We don't want to sort of jump outside the lines. Um, if you do, if you make a mistake, hit the backspace key and you can always step back a few space. And we just want to lock in where that is going to be. Now remember, Control plus, Control minus is our friend. Um, now, I started off with something fairly small. That's not really amazing, but I'm going to fill that in anyway. I'm going to grab my thing there. I'm going to go to G for bucket. I'm going to fill that in. And I'm going to continue on. I'm going to go back to my lasso tool. Now you can add to this by holding down shift and we can add to our selection of our marching ants here um, we've got a little bit of hair coming through here that I want to add on to or we can deselect by doing control D and starting again now I'm going to deselect that I'm going to grab my lasso tool I'm actually going to start in here and I'm just going to sort of try and figure out where that line looks going to be let's block that in And I'm just going to double click to close that loop. Kind of crossed over nicely. G and 
fill in. So you select to check. Now, one of the things you want to check for is not making any sort of getting any white areas in here. If we zoom in, you can see I've got a little bit there, so I'm just going to grab my bucket tool, sorry, my lasso tool, L, select that, G, and just fill that in. Great. Now, I'm going to I'm focusing on doing these little areas first because there is a nice little trick that I'm going to show you really quickly. And let's quickly grab these ones as well. Backspace. I have to make it up a little bit. Um, as we get towards the end, our line work is going to actually become less important. Um, we're going to try and almost make it redundant, um, depending on the style that you want to go for. Let's block that in and paint bucket. Now, if we quickly go back to our line art, I can make that visible. You can see all these are a big solid shapes. The line art happens to be covering. If I unlock that, bring the opacity up, you can see it covers that nicely. So let's bring that opacity back down again. Great. 